what is the link between religious persecution, booze, the launch of a new Korean car, and why Australia is such a great place? Well, it's tenuous, but let's see what we can do. Here we are in the Barossa Valley, 60 kilometres north of Adelaide, the capital city of South Australia. It is one of our great, arguably our best known, wine regions. And part of the reason it developed so well was the early immigration of some German folk who were fleeing religious persecution. They were of the Lutheran faith. Now that faith is named after Martin Luther who triggered the Reformation and that happened in 1517. The first boats that they bought to bring people out here, German immigrants out here, was in 1838. It takes some time for these religious sensitivities to settle down. Now why is booze related to this as well? Well, in the Reformation, alcohol was a bit of an issue. Not the only one, but an important one in some ways. The Catholic Church owned a lot of land of which they had a lot of vineyards on them. But interestingly, Martin Luther's wife was rather a dab hand at brewing beer. So, out to the Barossa Valley and Australia. Two of the early pioneers in this area were a British shipping merchant, George Fife Angus, and the other was August Cavell, who was a pastor of the Lutheran Church. Now, that's the power of money versus the power of God. In Europe, you would have had a war. Out here in Australia, they were the best of mates. And so the region prospered in a very peaceful but hard-working way. And so we come here to the launch of the Kia Cerato, the new model. It is a small to medium sized car. It competes with things like the Toyota Corolla, the Mazda 3 or the Hyundai i30. But should we be very pretentious in the way, like a wine connoisseur, that we judge this car? I don't think so. We're in Australia. So we're not going to talk about the handling and how it compares to a Ferrari or the fact that it doesn't have near the power of a supercharged Jaguar. Because here in Australia, you can buy a good bottle of Plonk for a pretty reasonable price. And metaphorically, that's exactly where the Kia comes in. Kia has launched its third generation of the Serato small medium sized sedan onto the Australian market. The first generation was of the more traditional three box style with rounded corners. The second generation was a little more stylish but still had the look of a car that was built for price rather than elegance. This new version, which is only the sedan at this stage, a hatch will come later, has a much more flowing appearance. Not quite in the league of the great looks of the Kia Stinger, but aspiring in that direction. It has an elongated muscular bonnet, while the rear looks very European. I think it will cannibalise some of the market of the slightly bigger Kia Optima, which was an early adopter of Kia's move to better looking vehicles. The boot capacity is 520 litres, which is good, but the opening is not big. The notchback design of the Stinger and other cars like the new Holden Commodore is much better by giving you easier access into the boot area. The Serato hatch, due in January 2019, might reduce the space a bit, but fix this issue, I believe. Unless you get the top of the range Sport Plus, you do not get an external button to open the boot. You have to rely on the key fob or the lever down by the driver's front seat. Interior style and quality of finish has not been the strongest point of Korean cars. The Serato is functional but not quite there yet in terms of feeling and ambience. 
The floating screen in the centre of the dash is a good size at 8 inches but protrudes from the dash almost as an add-on rather than a designed part of the fascia. But it does its job really well. My mate Alan thinks the flat squarish line of the dash in front of the passenger and the jet engine style vents look like the boot of a 1950s Chevrolet. He's not complaining and I think it has character. The satellite navigation graphics are excellent and include the speed limit in the top left hand corner of the screen. Very important in South Australia on the launch where the speed limit in a school zone is 25 kilometres an hour. The vehicle comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto making the driver entertainment system interface all the more functional. In front of the driver the two dials are simple and easy to read while the information in the middle including the navigation directions if you so want is a nice balance between the amount of information and its readability. There is only one engine, a 2 litre 4 cylinder petrol with a modest output of 112 kilowatts and 192 newton metres of torque and as it is not turbocharged you have to go to pretty high revs to achieve this amount of grunt. You can have a 6 speed manual in the base model or an automatic in all models and although the new Serato has a good coefficient of drag at 0.27 it weighs a little more than the previous model and the fuel consumption is slightly higher. The automatic is heavier but gets 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres which is better than the manual at 7.6. There are three equipment levels, the Basic S, the Sport and the Sport Plus. It's getting that way that every variation seems to have to have the word Sport in it. On the road I found the base model S comfortable and smooth its biggest limitation is the engine which has been around for a while and sounds like it is working hard even if you don't go to flat out acceleration. On one part of the trip we had four adults and a lot of luggage and the Serato fitted this purpose admirably. The Sport Plus gives you a firm ride and I did not feel quite as one with the car as I might have nonetheless it certainly handled the conditions well. Along with the basic safety features such as the mandatory electronic stability control, the Serato has autonomous emergency braking with a forward collision warning system as standard across the range as is lane keep assist. It tugs you into line if you wander in your lane. For safety and a feeling of well-being every model also has a reversing camera and front and rear parking sensors. Kia is very aware of just how price sensitive this part of the market is. So for the new Serato they have managed to have an entry level manual version on the market at a smidgen under $20,000 and that's a drive away price. Interestingly the automatic is only an additional $1,500. For so long the trend has always been that the automatic will cost you $2,000 more in just about every popular car on the market. To move up from the base model S to the sports version you add an extra $2,200 while the top of the range Sport Plus is another $2,500 on top of that making it $26,190 drive away. The Serato is a hugely important car for Kia. They anticipate that about a third of forthcoming sales will be of this particular model. Few will be manuals, about 5%, but nonetheless this gives them an entry level vehicle to get people through the door at under $20,000 drive away. It is a very good looking car, but the inside is not quite class leading in refinement, but it still has good room, good features and great value for money with drive away prices. In May 2018, for the first time ever, Kia has sold more cars in Australia than Holden, taking it to sixth position on the Australian market. It's not hard to see why.